Many chefs have gotten a ton of attention on Hell's Kitchen, for better or worse. You got your celebrity chef Tavons, your Elises, and of course your Rajas. But the one I'm talking about today became the center of attention for all the wrong reasons. But if you're asking me, well, I think that was his intention from the very beginning. I'm talking about none other than Jason Underwood. Jason was one of the 15 chefs in the fourth season of Hell's Kitchen. And right from the beginning of the season, Jason stood out from the rest like a sore thumb. Chef Ramsay is gonna eat you alive walking in his kitchen with that hat on. <laughs> but wait, this wasn't Jason. Who was this? Well, turns out Ramsay wanted to bring his prankster side to Hell's Kitchen, and he had good reason for it. Yup, Gordon freaking Ramsay. Ramsay apparently disguised himself and joined the new chefs on their ride to Hell's Kitchen from the airport, just to get a better feel of what the chefs were thinking. Yeah, we're like five minutes into the episode and already Ramsay's pulling out some undercover boss meets the F word shenanigans. And boy, oh boy, was there some real brutal trash talk going on behind his back. This was definitely gonna come back to bite the chefs in no time flat. He could have the hat, he'll just give it back to me when he gives me my own restaurant. <laughs> Once the bus reached Hell's Kitchen, Ramsay stuck with the chef's group since he wanted to see how far the other chefs would go without knowing that he was present. Sneakily, he had also directed Jean Philippe ahead of time to do something that would bring to light the attitudes of the chefs and how comfortable they would be ridiculing Ramsay himself. Now, if you're wondering what it was, take a look yourselves. Actually, I'm quite good in doing an impression of him. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty clever idea to see exactly what the chefs thought about Ramsay. And once Jean-Philippe showed off his impression of Ramsay, he then pushed the other chefs to follow suit. And this is when things got a bit ugly, since Ramsay was standing right behind them. Where's the lamb sauce? <laughs> but wait till you see Jason's impression of Ramsay, because it was just hilarious to watch. Come on, where is it? Oh, that's gotta hurt. Ramsay's reaction said it all, and Jason clearly had made one of the worst impressions for someone just starting out on Hell's Kitchen. Surely he was gonna regret it sooner than later. But the prank wasn't over yet. It was time for the great reveal, and Jean-Philippe then burst the bubble by asking Ramsay to do an impression of himself. So, how do you think that went? What about you, you big guy? Yeah, nobody expected Ramsay would pull that kind of a move, least of all Jason. Anyway, cut to the signature dish challenge, because who boy, don't even get me started. And the chefs were given the usual period of 45 minutes to complete their dish. Fast forward to the judgment, and Jason was still reeling from what went down earlier on the bus. But would his dish help turn around his initial impression? Let's find out. Sous chef Jason. It wouldn't even pass as something tinned in a can doesn't fare much better. Yeah, I mean, come on, it's Jason we're talking about here. For all of you that have seen the guy grow, or well, grow during his time on the show, you know what to expect. Those of you out of the loop though, buckle up. Anyway, Jason's initial enthusiasm had more than died down, and it was only then he realized that he was on one of the most competitive culinary platforms in the world. Great time to be having motivation issues, right? Once the taste test was over, Ramsay was extremely disappointed with the contestants. Just two out of the 15 had managed to get Ramsay to say something even remotely nice about their dish. And this clearly said something about the talent this season was throwing around. It's seasoned perfectly. Thank you. Thank you. Receptionist in a law office that has a palette. Everybody was gonna have to step up their game if they wanted to land a chance at being placed as the executive chef of his new restaurant in LA. One of you is gonna become the executive chef at my new restaurant here in Los Angeles. By the looks of it, Jason came prepared to win. It's Jason who won Hell's Kitchen and has his pocket full of money and has to beat women off with a stick for God's sake. Ramsay then brought out his two sous chefs who would be leading one team each, the men's and the women's. This time, though, Ramsay wanted to switch things up by making each team pick out a captain for the coming round. And this was going to be a frenzy since all of the chefs had just met. Back in the dorms, both teams started to discuss who would step up as the leader. And there was a burst of confidence in the air. Who wants to do it? I want to do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Wait, 
Did Jason just volunteer for captain after being told his food tasted like it came out of a can? That's some next level confidence there. Looks like he had something to prove. However, when Jason failed to make a mark on the men's team, he wasn't too happy about it. We're going with Bobby. Do it. We're going with Bobby. Anyway, once the decision was made, all of the chefs headed over to their bunks to get a good night's rest. Meanwhile, Bobby pulled through as a great captain, and Underwood eventually got comfortable with the idea of Bobby taking charge. However, he was troubled by a few more issues. Well, listen to them yourselves. I'll be damned if I'm going to lose to a team of girls. The only thing I'm going to lose to a woman is, like, an ironing contest. Yeah, this dude spared no expense when it came to getting in trouble. It was almost like he wanted to land in hot water or something. Anyway, fast forward to prep, and Ramsey called over all the chefs in the kitchen for a quick chat. When he asked Bobby to list the entrees they were prepping for, none of the men were able to articulate what they were working on. This was just embarrassing for a bunch of so-called professional chefs. As for Jason, he simply stood there like he had nothing to do with what was going on. What is the matter? Right now, you look like a bunch of dicks. We haven't even fucking opened. Anyway, once the guests started to pour in, all of the chefs quickly started to work, and each one put in their best. But wait, something went amiss when Ramsey suddenly noticed that Jason seemed to be missing from the group. Not just absent of mind like during prep, but completely 100% missing. Where on earth could he be at such a crucial time? Well, you're not going to believe your eyes when you see what our hero was up to. Where's Jason? Where is he on the appetizers? Where is he? Is this guy for real? What on earth was he thinking going out for a smoke at a time like this and picking his toes too? Jason surely had his priorities straight, and all that talk about winning was just that. Talk. What's worse is that Jason didn't even return after his little smoke break. Jason! What's he doing? Jason! Yeah, definitely winner material right there. Totally gonna be crushing it with the likes of Rock, Heather, and Michael. For sure. Now, when he finally came back, Ramsey started to scream his name from the rooftops. This had to have been a first in Hell's Kitchen, where one of the chefs just bailed to go do whatever he pleased while the rest of the team slaved away in the kitchen. Jason looks like a magician. He kind of disappeared. It's like, well, what the fuck you thinking? I mean, the only other one that's come to mind for me is Danny, and I've already talked about how that one was probably bogus over in this video. Get in the comments and keep me honest on this one, though, but I truly think Jason was in a league of his own here. Finally, though, Jason brought out the first batch of his entrees, and you would think, at least after all of that, he would try and put in some effort. But come on. What more can you expect from a serial slacker like Jason? Taste that. It was terrible, terrible, terrible. Jason would have to fix his attitude ASAP. If not, he was headed straight for elimination in the aftermath of the very first round. What a winner. Now, this is when Jason decided to up his game. He got to work and tried his best to fix his risotto, but guess what? His second attempt was an even bigger mess. And this time... Ramsey decided to punish him. Sit down. Let me know when you're done. I'll get dessert. To make things worse, a bunch of impatient customers started to leave, and there's honestly nothing more embarrassing than that. Stop! When service finally came to an end, the women had managed to snatch the win from the men, but, I mean, they hardly had to try with the anchor that was Jason weighing the men down. This left the men with one option, to come up with two names for elimination, and, well, surprisingly, Jason managed to brush past and survive to stick around for the second day. Absolutely baffling stuff. Now, had it been any other chef, after coming so close to elimination, they would have worked on themselves and got things together. But not Jason. The dude couldn't be less bothered. Took a beating tonight. That ain't happening next time. If I have any say-so whatsoever, I don't lose the especially a bunch of young little kids. That ain't happening again. Following that, the next day, the chefs were asked to divide and properly slice a whole halibut. This challenge would decide who would be working in the kitchen, prepping for the guests to arrive. This time, the men's team won by a hair and got rewarded with something that most people can only dream of. 
I've never been on any kind of boat in my life. The only boat I got near to was the love boat on TV. A lunch with Gordon Ramsay and on a yacht to boot? This clearly made up for the poor experience the men's team had on the first day. But after a whole day of celebration, the men prepared themselves for the grueling service that lay ahead. Congratulations. Well done, huh? Well done. Once the lunch was over and it was time, the men's team walked into a kitchen where their ingredients had already been prepped, courtesy of the women. Once back, each of the chefs started out on their rolls, and this is when Jason unleashed his true self. Yeah, if you're in the know, you have got to have been waiting for this. I don't think the girls have a clue what they're doing. But what do you expect without a man over there to lead them, of course? Here comes the sexism. I mean, it's pathetic to say the least. I hope he understands that trash talking wasn't gonna help him put out dishes on time. If anything, it was gonna slow him down. That's useless, unless what are they having a Tupperware party over there? Things soon started to heat up once the service kicked off, and this time, the men's team managed to clear all 47 of their appetizers on time. Wow, the bare minimum. However, when they moved on to the entrees, things started to go downhill. Just touch that, because he'll think I'm picking on him. Let's go. No, I don't make it. It's stone cold and it's raw. The tension reached its peak when Ramsey was unable to get the food out to the guests on time, and both teams started to fall behind on orders. Believe it or not, some of the customers had been waiting for over two whole hours after their appetizers, and this was just not acceptable. Ramsey then brought together both of the teams to give them a piece of his mind, and the amount of frustration he had towards Jason in particular was beyond imaginable. It's not mine. It's not mine! How dare you! It's just come back from the table! Luckily, since the men's team had cleared their appetizers and somehow managed half of the entrees, they managed to win the round for the day. A win none of them deserved, least of all Jason. But the following day, the tension literally hit the roof. Now that each team had one member eliminated, they were evenly matched for the coming challenges, and both teams were gonna have to put forth their best performance so as not to get eliminated. As soon as the chefs were woken up by Ramsey's deafening voice blaring out through the speakers, what was waiting for them on the other side was even worse. It's mine right there. Let's go. Let's go. While some of the chefs managed to catch a few of the chickens, the rest were still out and about. After all that chaos, the chefs were called to the main hall, where Ramsay finally dropped their next task. I want you to get up close and personal with your product. Basically, they had to de-skin and divide the chickens into equal parts, just the way a professional chef would. Now, mind you, this is no simple task, and even a few pro chefs aren't the best at it. But for Ramsay, being a chef starts right here. We're gonna go through it. Breast, breast, thigh, thigh, drum, drum, wing, wing. Unlike the challenge that took place on the previous day, this one would solely be based on personal merit. The halibut was a huge fish and intricate to cut through, but the chicken in the cooking world is the most basic yet most tough meat to slice properly. Once each of them were done with their individual chickens, it was time for Ramsey to gauge each of their skills. First came the women's team, who fared all right with only a few of them messing up badly, but then came the men's round, and the first one to go was none other than Jason. But Jason brought more than his chicken to the table. He decided to bring an array of unnecessary comments targeting the women, despite having no merit whatsoever. We're gonna win, because we're fucking men here, come on. Hunting and butchering meat, that's what men do. When he finally presented his cut chicken, you could just see the overconfidence flowing through the man, even while sitting across the screen. What he didn't realize was that he wasn't the best chef present there, let alone the best butcher. Jason was in way over his head, and this is when Ramsey decided to put him in his place. Hands on my desk, please. Holy mackerel. While Ramsey shuffled through the cut meat to see whether or not things were in order, Jason's cocky self couldn't stop bad-mouthing the women. But what he failed to realize was that things would soon boomerang right back around at him. And the moment Ramsey started to inspect his butchering skills, it clocked him right in the head. What'd you do to them? This was an embarrassment. And what's worse is that Jason dared to give silly excuses. But Ramsey had had enough. He decided to give him a reality check in return. It's fucked. My God. Well, of course, for all that trash talk, the men's team eventually lost the round, and the women's team, of course, won. 
Now, there wouldn't be a challenge without a punishment and reward, right? While the women's team were treated to a feast with Ramsey at a ranch, <laughs> but I want it harder, I mean faster. <laughs> the men's team, they were told to dress up in farmer's getup, only to be dropped off in the middle of 100 acres of farmland, where they would have to pick peppers for the kitchen in the boiling hot sun. Talk about feeling the heat on multiple levels. But Jason, oh, Jason. He started to whine like a baby. My head is just a sweaty mess, man. I'm chubby for two reasons. Number one, I like food. What's funny is that even after all that manly talk, he couldn't keep himself straight after five minutes in the sun. This was just pathetic. Where did all that manliness go when it came to physical labor? The man was an absolute joke. A walking hypocrite. No wonder he kept losing round after round. Number two, I don't work like that. What's more, once they were back, the women decided to jump into the jacuzzi. It was a hot day after all, and Jason, who was so full of himself, decided to make a move. What's up, girl? How you doing? Come on, come on, strip down, hop in the hot tub with us. Yeah, the dude simply couldn't keep it together. He was pretty much ogling all over the bikini-clad women. The man clearly had no shame. He jumped into action so as not to miss this golden opportunity and quickly stripped down to his underwear. But just then, something crazy happened. Yeah, that's the kind of fall he deserved right from the start. Little did he know that this was a ruse planned by the women to get him to spill the beans on the things that were going on in the men's team. Yeah, those women had him wrapped around their finger. And Jason, being the dumbass that he was, fell for it hook, line, and sinker. He didn't hesitate for a second to give up all the details. I know a lot of people are pissed at Craig right now because he fucked up so hard on chicken. Later on, when the men's team gathered together to have a discussion about the dinner service, the men finally decided to call out Jason for his, well, everything. They're gonna try and play little mind games with us, and the weakest link is Jason. Anyway, fast forward to the dinner service, and Ramsey gathered the chefs for a quick chat. He handed over the responsibility of desserts to Jason, but of course, he made sure to do it with a side of insults, too. Don't eat any. Okay, chef. Yeah? Yes. You see, the dude had absolutely no idea what the dessert menu was, and Ramsey wasn't having it. He sent him back to the dorms to memorize the menu. But guess what? Sometime later, when Jason returned, he fumbled again. Ramsey couldn't believe how pathetic he was being. And this is when Jason pulled a move nobody expected. You want to go home? That's you. Yeah. You're done. I'm done. Ramsey wasn't about to give up on him. He urged him to give it another shot, and after several failed attempts, Jason barely managed to list the desserts. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to cooking yet. They're tedious. Women can make desserts, you know, it ain't my thing. Anyway, now that he had the menu memorized, you'd expect him to ace the desserts, right? Well, Jason ended up destroying them, and Ramsey was at his wit's end. This was probably one of the quickest decisions Ramsey has ever made on Hell's Kitchen, and Jason had a huge part to play in it himself. He literally gave himself up for elimination, and Ramsey couldn't hold himself back from doing the inevitable. Yeah, good riddance. So, what are your thoughts on this wild journey? How would you rank Jason's time on the show? Get in the comments with how you're feeling, because I know I'm feeling pretty worked up. Or you could also leave me a message on any of my social media pages. And of course, if you love the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And while you do that, don't forget to check out this next one right here. It's even better because it probably, hopefully, doesn't have Jason in it.